Hey guys, how's it going? I just want to make a couple points here. Uh, I found uh, something on that Preterist Archive website I've talked about before, and uh, still not sure if I would consider myself a partial Preterist or not. Uh, you know, what theology I would line up with, if any of them, and you know, even those within partial Preterism don't agree on everything. So, anyways, but this website I found to be pretty uh, helpful with uh, different interpretations. But there was this, I was looking at the Millennial Kingdom, okay, this supposed uh, physical, literal, thousand-year reign that's, that's supposed to be on Earth, uh, that mostly people get from Revelation 20, which I believe before, too. It's popular, you know, pre-millennialism, you know, the rapture, pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib, whatever, they all believe in this thousand-year reign. Even there's, there's even a position that's post-millennialism, which Christ comes back after the thousand-year reign. And uh, so I pretty much have to say that I disagree with all of those now. But this packet is from Robert Bailey. I don't know how to how it's pronounced. 1645. This is old. But um, it's called dis a dissuasive from the errors of time. I'm not sure. Anyways, it's about the, the Millennial Kingdom. And, you know, he's refuting this, uh, this idea that it's a physical, literal kingdom. And there's some good points in here, and I've got to go over it more. And I need to start constructing on the forum my own, uh, you know, putting all this stuff together to show uh, how this isn't true, show the errors in it, show what is commonly taught, you know, how it's wrong. But there's some good points in here, I think, that, that seem good, that I want to share just a few things. Um, you know, so one of them is, the reason is, uh, he says the reason that there isn't a physical, literal thousand-year kingdom to come is because, uh, f since the ascension of Christ into heaven, he stays there until the last judgment. Now, I think that, you know, the judgment happens when the body dies, so I'd probably disagree with this person on what the last judgment is. But basically, Jesus ascended into heaven, and that's where he stays. Okay, and there's some scriptures that can help us uh, to see that. And there's one scripture that could be debated that uh, I'll have to try to understand a little better, and that's Acts 3.21. Uh, it says, Whom the heavens must receive till the time of the restitution of all things which God hath spoken by the mouth of all the holy prophets since the world began. So what's up for debate, I guess, is what does it mean uh, until the time of restitution of all things? Okay. Um, so some people might think Christ is in heaven until, um, you know, until he brings in the kingdom or whatever. It doesn't really make sense, though. Okay. So I kind of think that it, it means he's in heaven until... Uh, Maybe until all the uh, until all the saints that are saved are there, and the kingdom is complete in heaven. And uh, which basically, I think that you know he's he's in heaven forever, and that's where the saints are going to rule and reign. But I got to find out these. Uh, that wasn't even the one that I was going to go over. But that's something I need to look into more. Um, and then they they mentioned this guy mentions John chapter fourteen verse two and three. It says, "I go and prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, ye you may be." And so, I've said before that I think this is the coming of Christ at death. He says, "You know, I will come and receive you unto where I." Um, to where I am. And so we can kind of get from that that that's where Jesus is and where he's going to be is in heaven. Okay, it's nothing about him coming back to earth or anything like that. And, um, you know, believers inherit the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. We inherit eternal life. And so this kingdom is spiritual. And Jesus even said that the kingdom comes not with observation. And there are some other verses that we can point to that the kingdom is spiritual. But here's what I really wanted to get at. Uh, it says that another reason to not believe this physical, literal 
thousand year kingdom, which is commonly taught, is that Christ is sitting at the right hand of God till the day of judgment. Okay, and again, what's the day of judgment? You know, I believe that the day of judgment is when a person dies. But basically, Christ is sitting at the right hand of God forever. Okay, basically forever. So, um, so we see in Ephesians, Ephesians one twenty, it says he set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. In heavenly places is where Christ is supposed to be. Hebrews one verse three says he he sat down at the right hand of the Majesty on high. Hebrews chapter eight verse one says he is set on the right hand of the throne of the Majesty in the heavens. Okay, and then here's the thing too. We see in Psalm one hundred and ten verse one it says he sits at the right hand of God till all his enemies be made his footstool. And so usually. This uh, premillennial teaching is that Satan is bound for a while, and the wicked, there's no wicked that inherit the kingdom. Some say that there is, some say that there isn't. There's a lot of people that you know don't agree on everything here. But basically, you know, it's only the righteous that will inherit the, this earthly kingdom, and you know, because we always see that only the righteous will inherit the kingdom. But to me, that kingdom is heaven. It's eternal life. It's not it's not physical, it's spiritual, but let's just go with the premillennial thought here and say that, okay, the righteous people who, who are alive after Daniel's 70th week, after, you know, the abomination of desolation and all that, the wicked are destroyed, only the righteous go into this kingdom. But then you also must believe that eventually there will be wicked people in this kingdom because... Um, they say, you know, in Revelation 20, it says Satan is let loose again, and then there's like another battle um, before the end of this thousand years, which is taught. So, so basically, we see here that Christ is in heaven at the right hand of God, and we see in Psalm that he's going to be at the right hand of God until all his enemies are made his footstool. And so, if there's going to be wicked people in this thousand year reign, if there's going to be one last battle, all of his enemies aren't made his footstool yet. Okay. And also, I mean, we see verses over and over again that the wicked won't inherit the, right, the kingdom of God. And so, how can there be another rebellion in this thousand year reign? So, this thousand year reign, it has to be symbolic and stuff. Okay. We have to completely look at it differently. This is the book of Revelation. There's so many symbols, no doubt. Just look at, um, you know, I think chapter 12. It's very symbolic. But, mo I mean, you know, most of Revelation is symbolic. Um, so, so I hope you get that. This could be an evidence against this physical, literal thousand-year reign, and there are many evidences against it. But one is that Christ is sitting at the right hand of God, okay, until all of his enemies are made a footstool, his footstool. And also, you know, since his ascension, he abides in heaven. And, you know, he speaks of us being with him in heaven. And we see that in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, too, the, the, that passage that people use to teach the rapture. It says, you know, the, uh, the dead in Christ are with Christ. And, you know, when the Lord comes for us, when our body dies, we will be with him and with the dead saints all in heaven. So, you know, that's our hope, to be with Christ in heaven. Our hope is not for some future physical, literal, thousand-year reign on the earth. Um, there's some verses here that says that the kingdom is spiritual, not earthly. I have to go over some of them more, but I'll just read them off. Luke 1, 32, it says, The Lord shall give him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob, Jacob forever. Okay. And I guess that the idea here is if he's reigning forever, this has to be spiritual reigning. It can't be physical. It's not, it doesn't say he shall reign over the house of Jacob for a thousand years or something like that. It says, you know, forever. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 25 says, He must reign till, till he have put all things under his feet. Here there is but one kingdom. Okay, this is as common, I guess. Here there is but one kingdom and one way of ruling. A kingdom merely spiritual, okay? 
and no wise worldly. In Luke chapter 17, verse 20, it says, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation, neither shall they say, Lo here, lo there, but the kingdom of God is within you. And I think that's the major killer to this physical, literal thousand-year reign. John 18:36 says, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight. But now my kingdom is not from hence. And so also that's another one that just straight up slaughters this idea of a future physical, literal, thousand-year kingdom. John chapter 18, verse 36. When we got Romans chapter 14, verse 17, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy of the Holy Ghost. Um, so, you know, I'm not sure about how that one would apply exactly, but Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20, he raised him from the dead and set him at the right hand in heavenly places and hath put all things under his feet and give him to be head over all the church. Okay, and the nature of the church is another one, which is interesting. Um, basically, that, you know, there's no more ordinances or anything for the church. You know, we don't have to do the sacrifices and stuff. But these premillennials say that the temple's rebuilt and the millennial kingdom, there are sacrifices and stuff. And why? You know, it doesn't make any sense at all. And then there's also, you know, all these verses that talk about the body of Christ being persecuted. We must suffer for the, the sake of Christ. And so how does that go in line with this physical, literal thousand-year kingdom when, you know, it would be the body of Christ going into there, and all of a sudden they don't have to face persecution and stuff, but then again they do at the end of it. It just it doesn't make any sense. And people will say, well, that's not the body of Christ. That's, you know, the tribulation saints or the millennium saints. And, you know, how does all this stuff work out? And it it just seems like a bunch of nonsense. And I've tried to get this stuff to work before because that's what I taught. I taught the pre-trib rapture and the future thousand-year kingdom on the earth. And, and I tried to line things up, and now I'm seeing that it doesn't work. And these new interpretations that I'm understanding about the coming of Christ and judgment and everything else, it lines up way more. And uh, so... It just seems more consistent. I used to think that the pre-trib rapture was consistent, but I was wrong. And I thank God that I don't see that anymore now. But there's a lot of questions that have to be answered. Um, hmm. So I might just end on that note. There's some other things. It's a big packet. I haven't even went through it all yet. And uh, he also talks about the evidences that people use to teach this physical, literal thousand-year kingdom. Uh, I also have a packet that I already had before talking about the kingdom, the kingdom of God from the Master Seminary. It's like from John Car John MacArthur's thing, uh, but and he's for that. So I'm going to look at both sides, but I'm seeing more and more against this physical, literal thousand-year reign, and I think that it's totally symbolic. And we need to reconsider all that stuff. You know, at least I am anyways. But I would hope that other people are willing to do that. Because it just it just doesn't seem right. Okay. Uh, but, you know, praise the Lord. You know, if we're saved, we have that hope of, you know, glory with Him in, in heaven. You know, eternal life. The crown of life. Um, and we'll rule and, and we rule and reign with him so anyways i'm just going to end on that note but <laughs> think about that stuff you know that christ is at the right hand of god until all of his enemies are made his footstool okay and we see all the stuff about christ being in heaven and going into, to be in heaven with him think about how people uh you know hyper dispensationalists um, split the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God, and they try to teach that they're two different things. And, and that you should be able to see that that's false, especially when Jesus used both phrases in one in one setting, and he he used them, you know, um, and he used them both like they meant the same thing, and they do mean the same thing. Okay, it's just that God and heaven are switched. It's just a diff it's just a figure of speech. It's meaning the same kingdom, the one kingdom. And, uh, so, I'm probably just confusing more people, but just think about those things. So, I'll end that there. God bless.